high school called Bogut Academy in China, South Korea. And today I'm gonna to talk about basics of computer vision using OpenCV. It's not mathematics, it's computer science. And uh, I'm gonna really talk about really the basics of computer vision uh, using OpenCV, which is a specific uh, package for uh, computer vision. Um, we're gonna go over some basic concepts of uh, computer vision and the environments that I'm gonna use during this lecture. And then we're gonna go over some techniques that computer vision uses. Okay, so um, I'd like to first ask, what do you think of when you hear the word computer vision? Like if you know the definition of computer vision, oh, feel free to speak up. Um, if you, you know, you can just talk about what you feel when you listen to the word computer or vision. Does anyone have any ideas? Uh, do we unmute or do we uh, write these in chat? Oh, you can unmute yourself and speak up. Okay, cool. Um, is it like what people expect computers to do in the future or something? I don't know. Yeah, actually, that's true. Yeah, that's definitely true. We're aiming for the future and we're developing computer vision. Yes. Any other ideas? Feel free to... How they can, mm -hmm. how they can either perceive the surroundings. What is it again? That, how the computer perceives the surroundings. Oh, how the computer perceives the surroundings. Yes, yes. Right. Perceives surroundings. Yes, that is, um, I guess, partially true. I, I mean, your statement itself is true, but it doesn't like fully represent computer vision, I guess. But yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. Any other ideas? It's how the computer uses uh, a camera or something to recognize mm -hmm. the, anything in, the, in its um, radius. Like it's range, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. Like, um, so to define computer vision is say, it's a scientific discipline that studies how computer perceives uh, visually perceives digital image or video. Like uh, when we look at images, uh, humans, we have eyes, right? We could um, see like an image and then we um, perceive data from the image and we know what the image is about. But computers, as you know, don't have eyes. They uh, have to perceive in a specific way, in a, in a digital way, um, so that um, they could know what the image is about. And computer vision's ultimate goal is to um, do, um, like, let what humans do, uh, let let computers do what humans do. Like, we have our eyes, we can see uh, what the image is about, what the video is about, and we can perform tasks. For example, if we're, like, in this image, we're going to find pedestrians or cars um, in a street. Um, humans could, for example, like, draw a contour around those people so that they could indicate there is there are people around here, but computers cannot do it by themselves because like computer um, is really, uh, really can't do anything if we don't put anything. So um, computer vision's ultimate goal is to program the computer so that it could um, automatically uh, perform the tasks that human, humans are supposed to do. For example, the task that I uh, mentioned before, finding a pedestrian in the street, or um, maybe finding an automobile in the street so that people could mm, like prevent accidents in the streets, right? Yeah, those kind of stuff. That's the ultimate goal of computer vision. And uh, to go on, um, the next one I wanna talk about is, oops, sorry. Next one I'll talk about is OpenCV, which is the package that we're gonna use today. OpenCV is a computer vision project that includes many tools for um, manipulating images and uh, implements a lot of advanced techniques so that um, you and I don't have to really care about. It's basically a, a package, an external library that you can use in 
Python and computer vision so that you can get the features and the functions from the package and use it in your program right away. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys know Python or basically computer science, but um, in Python, uh, well, actually OpenCV was originally programmed in C and it was updated in C++. And then a lot of people nowadays use in Python because Python is the most, like the easiest language in, I guess, for me, it's the easiest language in computer science, like in the whole discipline, because, you know, the grammar and the syntax is way easier than other languages. And uh, for like advanced computer science projects, for example, like uh, advanced, I mean, like artificial intelligence or machine learning, in those kind of areas, most programs are written in uh, Python because they're really easy. And uh, computer vision is not an exception as well. They use uh, Python and OpenCV. And uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys used Python before, but in Python, you could um, import external libraries so that you could use their features and functions of the uh, external libraries in your program, which is really a good thing to use. And OpenCV is one of that, uh, one of those uh, external libraries that you can use for computer vision. Yeah. So in today's lecture, we're going to use OpenCV um, to do some stuff. Yes. And for the environment, um, I'm not sure how many of you guys are really, really interested in computer vision, but if you want to do the same thing that I did today um, in the future, then I think it's a good way to tell you, it's a good thing to tell you how I did that. So I'm gonna tell you some stuff about how I uh, set my environment to do computer vision things. Um, and the left one here is a program called PyCharm. And the right thing here is a program called Anaconda. Um, I'm gonna talk about Anaconda first. Um, Anaconda is like a set of, it's a program and it, it's basically a it, it, it's a, it shows a group of programs that a lot of um, advanced computer science programmers, um, for example, like data mining, artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, those kind of stuff are all into Anaconda. And the basic, uh, purpose of me using Anaconda in this lecture is to get the OpenCV package. You can install OpenCV package in several ways. You can like just download it from your window prompt or terminal if you're using Mac, using PIP install OpenCV. But I think it's hard to just, you know, put the codes in your uh, window prompt and download it. There are a lot of errors that could occur. So uh, I recommend using Anaconda and I'm gonna show you how it works right away. Um, yeah, so this is the Anaconda Navigator. Um, it's, it basically shows what kind of program it has, but this is not the thing we're looking for. If you go to environments here, and this is the, uh, the virtual environment that I created by myself, and it shows all the packages that I use for today's lecture. And if you just search for OpenCV right here, and if you download those three and you're good to go, you're good to go. If you link with the other program, then you are ready to use OpenCV, which is not really a hard thing. You just have to just click the check boxes and, you're, and it will automatically download all the packages that OpenCV is gonna need. Yeah, so that's how I use Anaconda. And uh, for the next one, I'm gonna show you how to use PyCharm. Um, so, I've created a, I'm gonna create a new project so that you can see how, um, like, how it exactly works. So let me just put it as um, open CV lecture. Um, let's just create a new folder there. Open CV lecture. Oops. Yep. And uh, by default, it will be like this. If you first download a PyCharm and if you're going to create a new project, by default, it will look like this. It will use your um, interpreter as the Python you have downloaded, some like Python 3.7 or 3.8, but you have to set the base interpreter as the one with the Anaconda icon. 
so that you could use the a virtual environment that you created before and with, with which has the OpenCV package inside it. So yeah, I've already created my own. So I'm gonna use my existing interpreter. And if you create, um, and there you go, you're ready to set up your new um, Python file, I guess. Yeah. And in the external libraries, there's the OpenCV packages that you can look at. Yeah. And we're ready to go. We're ready to code some stuff. Are there any questions so far? I have, I think I've spoken too fast and uh, there might be some questions. So if there are any questions, please unmute yourself and freely ask. Yep. Um, do you just drag the OpenCV application into your place of code or do you have to like write a code to get it in? Um, uh, you mean the installation process or um, what kind of process are you questioning about? To link your code and the OpenCV package. Oh, to like use OpenCV in your code? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about in a in like in the next slide. Yeah, how to like import OpenCV package. Are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so OpenCV is a Python library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OpenCV is one of the py Python libraries, like um, the famous ones like NumPy. Uh, pandas, matplotlib, those kind of stuff. Yeah, it's basically the same thing, but it does different stuff. Yeah, it has different features. Are there any other questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, like in the applications, like Python, like which one would you recommend to use? What was the question again? Uh, like in the computer science apps, like which one would you recommend to use? Oh, you mean computer like languages? Programming. Programming languages? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Python is the go-to language if you're going to do computer vision because you have other options like C++, C, um, Java, I guess. But yeah, if you really do some advanced stuff in computer vision, you will write a lot and a lot of code. And uh, yeah, if you're doing Java or C++, you have to care about the language issues, not the problem that you actually have to solve. Yeah, so I think if you use Python, you won't be like, um, you won't like struggle with the language itself. You will struggle with the problem. But yeah, if you use C++ or Java, you will struggle with both the problem and the language issues. Yeah, so I recommend you using Python for like any of the projects. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I'll move on to the next slide. And uh, let's talk about the uh, exact, the actual code. So one of the students just asked how to like use OpenCV in your code. And the first line is how you do it. If you just type import CV2 as you just import other packaging packages in Python, like example, import NumPy, import pandas. Um, if you just type import CV2, you are ready to use OpenCV in your code. Um, I don't know why it's called CV2. Like there's another keyword called CV that I think it's an, like an outdated version of Open OpenCV. Um, I don't know why they didn't put Open in front of CV, but yeah. Anyway, that's how you call um, call and bring the package, how uh, bring the external library, uh, the OpenCV library, and uh, the third line here, image one equals CV two dot in read pedestrian one dot JPG. That's the um, that's the code that you, um, first you create a variable called image one, and then you use the function inside a CV2 package, which is called mread, and you put a parameter called pedestrian1.jpg, which, which specifies the name of the image that you're gonna read. So image one, 
became the pedestrian one.jpg. This is an image file in the folder, and it's going to be uh, image one would be pedestrian one.jpg. It's just um, like bringing the image inside the variable. Yeah. And the next line shows the image. It displays the image in a window called pedestrian one. And it will, if you run the program, it will automatically pop up a window and you're going to see the image right away. Yeah. And the next uh, two lines are basically the same, but there are different images with different variable names and different window names. And uh, the last two lines are pretty important. The, the second to the last line, cv2.wp0, that's the line you make the program wait. Like if you do not put that line, um, the, the window that shows the images will like disappear right away um, when you run the code. Like, like in 0 0.1 seconds, it will just go away. So if, it, um, if you wanna like see what you have, you have to put that cv 2way key so that you could like see the window um, that shows your images. And the last one, CV2 destroy all windows. If you um, like click the like close button, then the the window will just go away. That's how that's how it works. Yes. So I'm gonna pop up my PyCharm and like I'm gonna copy and paste this code and like show you how it works. Um, where is it? There it is. Uh, we're gonna create a new file called let's say. Um, let's say, I don't know, uh, genesis.py. We'll copy and paste the code. Oops, something's wrong. Yeah. Oops. There we go. And I didn't bring the, uh, I haven't bring the, image files yet. So let me qu quickly bring it. Um, let's see. Oh, so if you want to like see where this folder is, if you just right click and click show in Explorer, it will just pop up a Explorer file, uh, like Explorer uh, folder that shows where it is. And if you put it right here, I just copy and pasted it. And you're going to see the images are right there. And since the uh, the image files are in the images folder, you have to specify they're in there by doing that. So you're specifying the the folder name with a slash and then the file name inside that folder. Yes, and this would pop up those two images. Hmm, pretty easy, right? Um, the first window here, it has the window name pedestrian one, just as we specified in the code. This one also pedestrian two. Good. Nice. Okay, let's go back to our slides. So I just taught you how OpenCV uh, brings images and displays images. Um, that was pretty easy. And uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, theoretical stuff, how images are represented in computer, in your computer screen. So there are two types of images, grayscale image and a color image. Uh, this is like the digital stuff, so it's not like really related to any like photography or those kind of stuff. Um, so <laughs> it's just talking about like computer science-wise image representation. Yeah, so this grayscale image um, has just one color per pixel, and each pixel uh, represents the shade of gray at that location. So this one pixel, it just has one color, which is gray, and um, there are numbers that uh, adjust the brightness or the how the dark the pixel is. And uh, the image is a... Uh, a matrix, a, a two-dimensional array of uh, numbers. So you can actually um, change an image if, if it's pixel-wise, then you can change it into numbers and you can see the numbers like that each pixel represents. Yeah. 
And uh, for color images, it's a bit different that you could see there are three, um, I don't know, boxes or we, uh, in technical terms, in like we call it, uh, we call it channels. This is a one channel image and this is a three channel image. And this is a uh, RGB, uh, this is in an RGB color space, which is uh, pretty familiar for all of us. Like RGB is the most uh, I don't know, familiar uh, color representation and uh, yeah, each uh, channel um, represents each color, red, green, and blue. And you mix the colors together, you blend, the colors are blended and it represents another, uh, a, a new color, right? And uh, yeah, each pixel has more data here because it has like three, um, this is one pixel. These three are one pixels, but um, each pixel like contains three more numbers. Okay, and uh, yeah, pixel positions are like represented this one is 0.0. .0. Can you can you guys actually see my cursor? Can you guys see my cursor? Okay. Thanks. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, you can actually like represent each pixel as a coordinate. And um, this one on the very top left, this one is 0 .0, uh, 0, 0. And if you go right way, um, the x coordinate increases. And if you go down way, if you go downwards, the y coordinate increases. So this will be uh, 0, 8, this will be 8, 0, and this will be like 8, 8. Yeah, that's basically how the coordinate system works. Okay. And there are other digital color representations. Um, the one we just saw on the color space, uh, the color image was actually RGB color space, which is pretty easy, like there are three channels that represents red, green, and blue, and you mix the colors together to create a new color. And uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. And the second one is uh, a color space called HSV color space. Um, H stands for hue, S stands for saturation, and V stands for value, which is basically brightness. And uh, yeah, if you just see the image, you can see what each values represent, like hue, is the uh, the color that you wanna? Uh, it's like zero to fix uh, three sixty, so it represents either red, orange, yellow, green, like like a rain, like a rainbow, right? It goes around and uh, picks one color. And saturation is the like the um, how strong the color is. If it's not that strong, it will just turn into a grayscale image. And if it's strong enough, it will like show a pretty solid uh, color image. And the value is like the brightness of the color, like how the bright, uh, how bright the uh, the color is. Like if value is zero, it will be really dark. If value is one, it will be really bright. And the one right here is a color space called YUV color space. Uh, y is, uh, y represents the brightness or the luminous of the color, and U and V color space they represent uh, the color like basically what color it shows. I'm not sure like what each U and V represents. I just know that U and V together, they represent a color. Um, I've done some researches, but I failed to find out what each <laughs> channel means, but together it means color and uh, Y means, uh, Y represents the luminance of it. Yeah. We're gonna use RGB color space for most of the times, maybe HSV, if we do like um, thresholding in the future, but it will be mostly um, RGB or HSV. We're not going to like study or why we think it's too complicated for today's lecture. It's only an hour, so yeah. So we're gonna uh, dig in some RGB channels and color images. Um, so this is another code. Um, we're importing two packages here this time. The one that we just imported is basically the same as OpenCV, right? CV2. And we're going to import another package called NumPy. NumPy is basically a package for, um, for mathematical um, procedures in Python. Yeah, it's like one of the go-to packages if we're going to create a matrix, for example. Um, you're going to need NumPy. and um, um, we're, we're not going to really 
need NumPy in this code, really. I'm not sure why I put there, but um, yeah. In the future, we may need NumPy, so yeah, just be aware of that. And uh, for this uh, code, we're gonna bring a, an image file called trackers uh, and, a, and, a, and a variable called image. And we're gonna split the images into three channels, which is blue, green, and red. That's uh, the 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 per the parameters are uh, are short terms for blue channel, green channel, and red channel. Yeah, and in OpenCV, you have to know that um, if you split the images, um, basically you think it as RGB, so you think that R must come first, but actually uh, blue comes first when you split the channels in OpenCV. Yeah, and we're gonna show and we're gonna show the uh, each channel and different uh, windows, um, each blue, green, and red channels in three different windows. And this is just the code that prevents the, uh, the windows to overlap each other. I just, just moved the window a little bit. And uh, we're gonna wait uh, for that. Uh, and we're gonna make another variable called image, co image copy, which merges all the, uh, all the things together. We're gonna show how it looks like. Yes, so let's see how it works. Oops, another location issue. Yep, there we go. Uh, so we have this image, trackers. This is how it originally looks like. If we run it, Ooh. Did you not include file name? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to put the folder name. <laughs> okay. Nice. So if you see each channel does not really show a like a red, green, blue. That you as you thought because like it's it's a single channel it's just a grayscale image but if you see the original image like this part is pretty red right so in the red channel yeah this is pretty bright and in this one in green channel like in the grass this one's pretty bright right so that's how it represents each channel like the um, if it's bright, it, it means that there's that red color, there's the, the green color. And uh, yeah, for this yellow, uh, maybe orange, like this color also represents like, pretty brightly in the red channel, which is pretty near together. And uh, the sky, the blue one, is pretty bright here too. Yeah, so there you can see um, each channel are represented pretty well. And that's the original one. Yeah, so we just split it, the RGB channels in the color image to see how it exactly looks like. Nice. And uh, we're gonna do some drawing since we're gonna find contours uh, later on in this lecture. We're gonna, uh, in, in OpenCV, it has features to draw um, things such as circles, rectangles and like simple lines. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna dive into the code right away. <laughs> import CV2, import NumPy, they're just basically the packages that we're gonna need in this code. Um, draw one is, uh, I'm not sure like if you could understand this, but follow with me. Uh, NumPy is zeros is a, this code is creating a, an array of zeros. And it's basically a three channel with 300 width and 500 length. So they are total of, I guess, 150,000 zeros as an array. And it will be our background of the image. And as you uh, know, the RGB, uh, this is, we're gonna use this in an RGB color space. And if the values of an RGB color space are all zero, then it's just gonna be black. And for the second one, we're gonna create a, a similar one. It's gonna be 500 width 
right? Like 500 ones uh, as width and 300 ones as the length. So there's going to be like, again, uh, 150,000 ones um, as a three channel. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to multiply 255 to all of it. And if the numbers are 255 in all of the matrix, like it will be white. Um, the RGB, the number in RGB channel ranges from zero to 255. Like zero is black and 255 is white. So draw one is going to be just a black background and draw two is going to be just a white background. I'm going to draw something on those two backgrounds. Um, in the first one, we're going to create a line. Uh, the second one, a rectangle, a circle, an ellipse. And we're going to also put some text there. Okay. And uh, if you're wondering ab uh, about the parameters, this is the background that you're going to do. And these are the colors. Like if you see there are three numbers in this uh, in the parentheses, these are going to be the colors since this uh, RGB is going to be a blue color like that. So yeah, if you're wondering about the parameter, um, if you just like type CV2 line or CV2 rectangle and you can see what each parameters uh, specifically are about. Yes. And three. Copy and paste it. We're not going to need anything specific here. Okay, so that's how it basically worked. Um, so this is draw two, right? Draw two, uh, the white background. We created a line here, which looks like this. It's a red line. And uh, yeah, in draw two, we also create a circle right over here, uh, a blue circle. And uh, in draw two, in, a, uh, in draw one, in the black background, we created an, a rectangle, uh, an ellipse, which looks kind of weird, but this is an ellipse. And uh, I'll put uh, some text here called height here. Yeah. And uh, if we go over the code a little bit, um, there's a code called mwrite. In write is basically a function that um, saves the image that you created in your folder. So if we click black pick here, they automatically save the uh, the output that we had, and also for the white pick yes, in our folder. Yeah. So that's how you basically draw things in uh, OpenCV. Um, you're gonna have to draw sometime when you do when you find contours but well specifically you can do like automatically uh, you can like put uh, codes that automatically draw for you so maybe you don't have to but yeah. it depends on the situation you sometimes have to draw by yourself so it's good to know um, the functions for drawing stuff in OpenCV yeah and we're gonna finally use our camera not an image file um, and I'm gonna use my camera here. So uh, there might be some issues since we're having a Zoom call. Like I tried it by myself and sometimes it has problems with these, uh, it like clashes with the Zoom since Zoom uses my camera. So I might have to turn off my camera for, for a second in Zoom and show you the results. This is where like all seeing my uh, screen, you can see my face, yeah. Um, and this uh, code is basically just like bringing um, your webcam and you don't have to like specify like where the webcam is, what kind of, uh, what the name of the webcam is. Like it automatically uh, knows, like uh, it automatically like finds your webcam and it will show the results. And basically it's the same, you are importing OpenCV package and there's another uh, a function called video capture, which like captures your webcam, it gets your webcam. And I send a variable as a vidcam. And while you have to put that, uh, we have to use a while loop here. If you, for those who do not know what loop is in computer science, is basically a loop. Yeah, I, I don't know how to like <laughs> explain more of that. It's, it's a loop. And um, this gonna this while true will go over until it breaks here. 
like until we uh, enter Q. Um, so yeah, we created a variable call with cap, and we're gonna uh, like we use a function called read, and it will give us two values, which is red and image. And we're only gonna use this img file since red is red is a return value, but we don't really use it. Yeah, and this second line, um, it it like mirrors your webcam. If you're like, if I'm like doing this right here on my webcam and Zoom right now, uh, if I do the same thing like here, it'll appear like this in in the in the later result. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. Um, so I'll later on raise my right hand and you can see that it's on my right right now, but later on you'll see it's on my left. And uh, for the next one is just shows your webcam and the image. And those four lines are pretty uh, interesting ones. Like um, you don't have to like really know what's happening here, but uh, if you type Q, the, if, if you type like Q on your keyboard, then it will just automatically disappear. The window will automatically disappear. Yeah, so we're creating a, a variable called user char, which like guess what the user is typing in in, his, uh, in in the keyboard. And if the user char is Q, then the loop breaks and we're out of the loop, which destroy all the windows, the, the webcam window, and it will release the video capture. Yeah, that's basically how it works. And I'm gonna show it right away. I'm gonna turn off my video for a sec. Um, so that it would work in my pie chart. Hope it works. Oh, nice, it worked. Hi. See, I'm putting on my right hand right now. It's because of this specific line that I mirrored the uh, mirrored my webcam. Yeah. And if I type Q, then the uh, window is automatically disappear. Uh, okay. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> it's been a ride, I know. Um, there might be a lot of questions, but feel free to ask all as, uh, answer it as much as possible. What was the something something XFF the, that was after Q? You mean this one? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. You have to know what ASCII code is already. Oh, I haven't done my videos yet. <laughs> you have to know what ASCII code is. Do you know what that is? No. No? Uh, yeah, so in Computers don't recognize numbers as numbers, right? You know that computers only understand zeros and ones, right? And uh, yeah, this is um, one of the representations that is actually uses um, 16 numbers. And uh, like it's zero XFF is 16, 16 base number. And um, to be honest, I'm not really sure how that exactly works, but I, know that it works in ASCII code. So yeah, Q, 0xff would be the representation of Q yeah, as an ASCII code, yeah. I'm not sure about it. If you, <laughs> if you're really interested, um, I will personally contact you and explain what that is, yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Is OpenCV fast enough for uh, a constant video stream? Yes, OpenCV is not that heavy. If you have a like a decent computer setup, then you might be okay to go. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of uh, like YouTube videos that do not have like the great setup, and they were pretty okay to go. Yeah. And are there any other questions?
So OpenCV is technically like small basic. What is it again? What is it again? Uh, so OpenCV. So OpenCV is technically like small basic, like a, a, the advanced version of small basic. Small basic. So OpenCV is like. It's like a, a advanced version of small basic. Um, I'm not sure what small basic is, so yeah, I'm afraid <laughs> I do not know what that is. Yeah, can you explain what that is briefly? Uh, it is like a uh, programming software, like you can mm -hmm. do with commands, like in OpenCV, it is like with CV dot, like in small basic, it's like with Tato dot. It's technically the same. Mm, I see, I see. If, um, if that uh, small basic, I'm not sure what that is, but if that um, reads the digital, reads digital images and videos and it, does, it, does, um, it goes some kind of pre-processing and if it's related to computer vision, like detecting something, detecting, detecting objects, people, then yeah, I can't even that's what basically, basically what OpenCV is. Basically.